The Edwards family at one time seemed like modern day Robin Hoods, but they made the dark choice to steal from the rich and keep it for themselves in 2020. With the world in chaos from COVID-19, you'd think a family of Christian missionaries such as Edwards would be on the front lines willing to help their fellow man. The Edwardses had different plans and the only ones that would try helping were themselves. So they decided to cash in on the Paycheck Protection Program to the tune of millions using their religious organization Aslan International as a front for their operation. Just how did the Edwards family scam their way from $100 to $8.4? million dollars. Dr. Evan Edwards, along with his wife Mary and their two children, Joshua and Joy, were Christians with a calling. Before they were scamming millions, the Edwards were a missionary family willing to help others find Christianity even when that meant endangering their own safety. They devoted their lives to preaching the Bible and even moved to Turkey to reach those who seemed unreachable. Spending more than 20 years in Turkey even gave Evan the inspiration for his tell-all book, It's a Happy Life, The Keys to Successful, Enjoyable living. Facing extreme danger and even large-scale conspiracies to thwart their mission to help others, it's all in there, the action-packed spiritual guide. Aslan International is the foreign ministry the Edwards family claimed as their non-profit religious organization. Founded in Ohio in 2005, it wasn't until 2018 when they would file to conduct business in Florida. According to Evan, he moved his family to Turkey in the mid-2000s to spread Christianity. Turkey is not the most welcoming country when it comes to religious freedom, particularly Christianity in the mid-2000s. Knowing what we know now about the Edwards family, is everything about his death-defying life in Turkey a lie? Where did it all go wrong? The Edwards family had supposedly spent all this time in Turkey enduring harsh conditions to spread God's word and help others. However, their time in Turkey is not documented online if it isn't coming from Evan's mouth. You'd think a Christian preacher who allegedly distributed half a million Bibles in a predominantly Muslim country would have made a Turkish headline somewhere, right? Evan claims his family was there to help poor people in crisis, yet they come back to America and scam millions in relief efforts from citizens in need. At first glance, their website landing page seems a lot like other ministries or religious outreach programs. That is, until you keep scrolling and the obnoxious length of each of their pages becomes apparent. That, paired with the cut and paste Bible verses that fill every page without reason or direction, immediately raises red flags. Links to what should have possibly been other branches of their organization only lead in circles, only to lead back to the aimless verses and what looks like stock images of happy religious folk. With little proof of real work, the bare minimum for business offices and possibly the worst homepage in the world, Aslan International filed for a PPP loan and got one. The Edwards were supposed to use that money to pay the 400 employees listed on the application. But there is only one problem. They miscounted. The only employees of Aslan International were the four family members. But that was probably just a typo. When you step back and really look at the picture coming together in this case, the holes in the Edwards story start to show. What really happened in Turkey? Have they even been to Turkey? Several accounts were opened at different banks using different names. A setup was already being put in place to pull off their multi-million dollar scam. They only put $100 in each new account though. Is that all they had? The paper trail doesn't stop there. Each family member had to do their parts to pull this scam off. This included tax forms, fake business accounts, and financial records. Further investigation reveals that the $100 in each account may have had more to do with the minimum required opening deposit than their actual cash on hand. Either way, those accounts went from minimum to overflowing after a few government deposits. These deposits were funded by loans made available to the CARES Act relief package. The United States put this package together to address the growing economic crisis brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic. This particular program the Edwards applied for is called the PPP loan. This loan was meant to help small businesses continue paying their employees during the pandemic. It offered super low interest rates and the possibility of complete loan forgiveness if the proper criteria were met. PPP loans, when used properly, gave many small businesses a fighting chance and kept workers employed even though they couldn't come to work. Unfortunately, it was also like blood in the water, and the sharks came swimming. Scam artists, not just Edwards, began to circle and once again take from those in need. Though the program stopped taking applications in May of 2021, it received more extensions and funding throughout its availability. This came to $519 billion allocated for the loans, with $140 billion remaining unclaimed as of June 27, 2021. 
This was the perfect opportunity for the Edwards to shoot their shot at filling their pockets with money meant the down and out businesses of America. Money can quickly go to people's heads and the Edwards family was no exception. You would think Evan Edwards would guide his family to stay humble in their crimes, maybe keep a low profile, but instead they went big. The American dream of going to Disney World wasn't enough for Evan and his family. They wanted to live there at the Golden Oak at Walt Disney World. Yes, we said at Disney World. The five bedroom, five and a half bath estate boasts 4,697 square feet of luxury and opulence. The price tag was reflective of that at the cost of over $3 million. There was no time to think it over either. Edwards had already made an $800,000 down payment as of July 2020. Was that the motive here? That he just wanted to live in Disney World? The Edwards are not the only ones who raked in millions in PPP loans. The list of those who received this government loan may surprise you from Kanye West to Pearl Jam. The rich and famous utilize the government program for their various businesses, just like the not so rich and famous. Global restaurant giants like P.F. Chang's even received a PPP loan. Other religious groups and leaders such as Joel Osteen and several branches of the Scientology Church came under scrutiny for their use of the government dollars. Growing concern and media coverage of PPP loan fraud brought unwanted attention to the loan's rushed process flaws. The feds finally addressed the issue and promised to start cracking down, spelling bad news for the Edwards and others who thought they were free and clear of their crimes. The Edwards had a plan for how to move the funds and disguise the money. However, it wasn't a well thought out plan. First, the financial institution processed the PPP loan application for Aslan International and deposited it into their account. Keep in mind, this account went from about 100 bucks to 8.4 million overnight. Then the bank hopping began. Edwards' family started transferring money into a handful of different accounts they'd recently opened. One account held the $800,000 down payment meant for their Disney dream home. Clearly, the Edwards were not seasoned criminals and all these red flags were about to catch up with them. Their scheme unraveled fast. The FBI froze their accounts while investigating their business and financials. The investigation led them to the business address for Aslan International. It's completely deserted. Agents spoke with other tenants in the business park and they barely knew who the Edwards were. They said they hadn't seen anyone enter the alleged business and didn't believe it was ever occupied. If the Edwards weren't at work, maybe they'd be at home. So take a wild guess who they found at the family's Smyrna Beach home in Florida. Nobody. The house was deserted. It looked like nobody had been there for some time. Neighbors confirmed they hadn't seen anyone at the residence since September 9th. The feds left and the Edwards showed up again, daring to ask their neighbors if the FBI had come by. Great way to start a friendly neighborhood conversation, right? The Edwards were on the run and they weren't just worried about the FBI. Not only were the feds now investigating the Edwards family, so was the Edmonton Police Service in Canada. Greed got the best of Evan he had applied for another PPP-style loan in Canada for $2,000. The Edwards family was pulled over on September 17th when Florida Highway Patrol stopped them for speeding. All four members of the family were in the car. They claimed to be heading to a conference in Texas, yet could not produce any specifics of their trip for the officer. A search warrant was issued to search the vehicle. And lo and behold, the car was full of evidence, mostly shredded evidence, probably done with the shredder purchased only two hours after the feds had shown up at the Edwards' house to interview them initially. The FBI also found packed luggage, multiple laptops, tablets, and even trash bags filled with shredded documents. The Edwards had millions in their bank account and the Canadian border in their sights. While they did make it to Canada, they did so without a penny. The US government recovered the PPP money. The Edwards have kept a low profile since and no Disney World trips have been planned recently. Maybe a lesson learned? Though no charges have been filed or arrests made, the investigation is still ongoing. However, the feds have assured the American people they are working with several other branches of law enforcement. This joint operation is to address PPP fraud and recover over $300 million in stolen funding. So where does this leave the Edwards family? Will they be in hiding forever? Possibly. We do know the ever-changing, adventurous life the Edwards family depicted has left confusion in its wake. Who are they really? Maybe one day we will know their real story. The US and Canada do have an extradition treaty. 
If the Edwards are formally charged in America, they can't hide for long. Penalties for PPP fraud vary depending on each situation. If found guilty, members of the Edwards family could face up to 20 years in prison. Some people can't resist the lure of free money. Randy A. Fresinelli of Pennsylvania applied for another fraudulent PPP loan while he was already awaiting trial for PPP fraud. Guess it's best to go down swinging, huh? Thankfully, in the case of the Edwards family, the feds caught on just in time. As a result, the government could retrieve all the money from the PPP loan and stop any significant purchases from wiping out the funds. As for the Disney World home, it was bought by somebody else, most likely with legal money. Click here to watch one of these next videos.